KWF fundamental. So upon comprehension of this class, okay, you'll be able to distinguish between the AP technologies, understand the KWF protocol. Okay, introduction to AP. A WN can be deployed in either of the following architecture. The AC-based AP architecture, and we call it as FIT AP. Traditional independent AP architecture, we call it as Okay, so this is the um, FET AP. So with the deployment of WLAN and the WLAN market, FIT AP are replacing the FET AP rapidly. FET AP have a WAN and a LAN interface and support dynamic host configuration protocol for sure, we call it as DHCP. And also the DNS, MAC and REST current, as well as VPN. Some of the products also support the firewall feature. So this AP will be pretend like the router that we're using. So they can do almost all the, the feature here. Okay, they have an antenna and support all type of the version, doing the encryption, authentication, security, QRS, roaming. For the FIT AP, FIT AP cannot be independently configured or used. So when we're using the AP, uh, and configure as a fit AP, you must have the controller. So in this kind of deployment, the fit AP will just pretend like the dumb AP without any configuration. So because all the configuration is stored inside the controller. Comparison of the fit AP and fit APs. So the first one, the combination fit and the AC. Fit AP are cheap and easy to manage, but the AC are expensive. Fit AP is expensive when you only compare to the uh, Fit AP. But the best part is this one is doesn't need to work with the AC. It can be worked independently. Then the networking mode. The Fit AP cannot work alone and need to be maintained and managed by the controller. So when you want to change any SSID, the VLAN, or you want to swap the IP address, everything you have to done on the controller. Fit AP can be deployed on WLAN with zero configuration. So this is the uh, the advantage. When we have so many um, the AP deployed at the uh, the environment, so all the AP we doesn't require to configure anything. So you you can just rely on the controller. Number three, FIT AP and the AC communicate using the uh, proprietary protocol. So they must be the product from the same vendor. AC and AP from a different vendor are not compatible with each other. So this one we have to take note. So you cannot mix with different vendor uh, AP and the controller. Each AC manage only few AP. So this one we uh, depend on the license okay, and also the maximum number of the AP they can actually support. For the FET AP, configuration file need to be issued to each AP manually okay, because this FET AP is not using the uh, the AC to do the configuration. So every single FET AP have to configure manually. The network management system support AP deployment on a large network and management of the large number of the user. Fit AP and the MS use the standard IP layer protocol to communicate. So there's no problem with the compat uh, compatibility. The NMS can be managed and maintain a large number of the AP and support the integration between wireless network and the wire, uh, the wire uh, broadband network. For the service, for the Fit AP can use at a layer two and also the layer 3 roaming. So this solution supports various voice services in addition to the data service, the QoS and security. For the FAT AP, only can perform the layer 2 roaming. When go to the layer 3, the roaming will be failed. Cat Web Tunnel. So since traditional WLAN architecture cannot satisfy the demand of the large scale networking, IETF established control and provisioning of wireless access point. So for short, we call it as a cap web. Okay, this is a name for the protocol. 
the team to create a large scale WLAN solution that can be connect AC and the AP. So this is the protocol used in between the controller and the AP access point. So here I have four reference protocol for the CAP web protocol. So LWAP, LWAPP, the standard is RFC 5412. So this is a property protocol by the Cisco. Okay, they, so this one is giving the comprehensive description of the detection security and the system management matter to support the spread map and the local map model. AC and AP are connected on layer 2 or layer 3 network. On the layer 2, the L web packet are transmitted in the Ethernet frame. On the layer 3, it will transmit in the UDB frame. The encryption. This protocol only do the encryption on the signaling. Okay, they're using the high level encryption, AS CCM. But to the data, they never do anything. Okay, there's no encryption for the data. SLAPP. Okay, this is belong to the Aruba. So they support two local map mechanism, the bridging and the tunneling. Support direct connection, layer two connection, and also the layer three connection. To use the mature technologies and the standard to build data and use GRE for the data communication. So compared to the previous one, the Cisco, the LWAP, this one they got doing the encryption on the signaling and also the data link, both using the DTRS to perform the uh, encryption. CTP defined by Siemens. Use the extender SNMP to realize configuration and management of WTP. So CTP control packet are used control SDA connection status and WTP configuration and status. So this is basically for you to easy to manage using the, this kind of the property protocol. Okay, can using the SNMP. Define the authentication mechanism and the serial of the encryption rule based on the AES CCM, but the rule is still need to be optimization. And the last, YCAP, okay, defined by the Panasonic. Define the AC detection mechanism, including the AC to the AC performance negotiation. Define the QoS parameter. Okay, so this is the uh, the feature for this protocol. So the protocol recommend the IPsec and the EAP security standard, but do not specify the imp uh, implementation method. The camera origin. So you're going to take out all the advantage, the, the better feature from the different protocol. So it will take the, some of the feature in the SLAP-P. The highlight of SLAP-P is the DTRS technology which is highly appreciated in the industry. And the LWAP, okay, this is the full name for the LWAP, has a complete protocol architecture and defined detailed packet structure and the multiple control methods. Then the last two is the CTP and the YCAP. So they can be certified the demand of centralized WLAN architecture. Camera protocol is used for the interconnection between AP and AC. It enable an AP manage connect the AP in the centralized manner. Camera protocol provide the following function: automatic AC discovery and operation maintenance of the AP and the AC state machine. The AP management and the service configuration delivery and the SDA data forwarding through the camera partner. So there's two different forwarding mode for the uh, inside the AC. So we can configure in the direct forwarding or the tunnel forwarding. In the direct forwarding. So you notice in the picture here they were showing one blue color tunnel. Okay, so this is a cat web tunnel. The red color dot is referred to the data, the user data. When the user want to forward the data or maybe they want to access to the network, the internet. So in the direct forwarding mode, they can go directly to the gateway and go out to the network directly.
So this is called the direct forwarding. In the data forwarding, which is this one, for all the user data must using this data. So all the data frame is sent back into the data here, return back to the controller, and let the controller to forward out the data to the network. So this is called the data forwarding. So right here they have the advantage and the disadvantage compared with this uh, direct and the data forwarding. The advantage. Service data does not need to forward by an AC. Improving the packet forwarding uh, efficiency and reducing the burden on the AC. Because all the data can just go directly without passing through the AC anymore. So they can able to uh, have a better performance. Okay. What is the disadvantage? The service data is difficult to manage and the control in the centralized manner. So right now the packet is part, uh, bypassed the AC. So that means right now you can't able to using the, uh, the controller to control the user data. So you have to rely on the firewall. Then the next, the data forwarding. What is the advantage? The AC forward all the data packet, ensuring the security and the facilitating centralized management and control. So they can centrally manage all the AP protocol and also including the data frame sent by our, our user. Service data must be forwarded by an AC. Reduce the packet forwarding efficiency and burdening the AC. So this is a problem here, because when we're using the data forwarding, all the traffic have to go back to the AC before you going out to the network. And this is the packet format. So they have two different packet format. First is called control packet, and the next is the data packet. Data packet is belong to the user, like we access to the network, all our packet is this data packet. Control packet will be used by the AP. So both of them using different type of the port number, the UDP port. Okay, so this how does it look like for the control packet? Okay, and this is for the data packet. AP online process. Discovery of the feed AP by AC process. Is there a pre-configuration AC IP address in the list? Okay, so this happening to the AP when the AP we already um, um boot up, and then the first thing they're going to check. Do you have any uh, pre-configured static IP to make the AP find the controller? If yes, then the AP will associate with the AC using the specific IP address. So once form the connection, then end. Okay, they will establish the, the link. If there, no, mean we have never statically configured any IP address. Then the AP will run the auto discovery. They will send as a broadcast. So send a broadcast and try to discover the AC. So when successful associate with the controller, then they will form the camera data. Okay, this is a dynamic discovery. Okay, this is a complete process. Okay, you require the AP, DSCP server, DNS, and also the controller. AP will try to get the IP address because for all the IP device, if you want to form the connection, the first thing you require is the IP address. Then once you already get the IP address, the next step, if the, in the same local network they have the DNS server, so you try to find the AC IP address from the DNS, uh, DNS server. If they have no DNS server, can able to uh, get to know where is the AC, no problem. The AP will still able to send the broadcast and find the controller as long as they belong to the same network. Okay, so after the AC respond back to the AP, then you form the camera data. So the solution of the network exception. So if the DSCP screen on the live network does not support the option 43 or option 15, take the following uh, measure. Enable the AP to discover the AC using the cat web if they are connected through the layer 2. For the layer 2 network, it will be very simple. As long as you can using the um, the AP uh, ping to the AC, okay. I mean, it's only on the layer two network. Okay, they can uh, form the interconnection. So 
they can all, always running the auto discovery to form the cat web tunnel. But on the layer three, when the AC and the AP belong to two different subnet, two different VLAN. So on the layer three, you have to do some configuration. So use an AC as a DSCP server to allocate the IP address to the AP. Okay, so this method is recommended because if the AC is the DSCP server, when they allocate the IP address to the AP, when the AP can get this IP address, right, this means they can always file the controller. Or else, you have to touch on the option 43. Okay, this is happening uh, for those of the DSCP server. Okay, you, you notice I have some of the field, they did mention option 43. The option 43 is one of the settings for you to configure the IP address of the controller. So this apply for the layer 3 network. When the AP and controller belong to two different VLAN, so you have to touch on the option 43. So this is a process for them to establish the cap web tunnel. So let's begin from our first one. The AP, DSCP, server. So starting the AP, we're going to send the discovery message. Okay, try to find the DSCP server. So this uh, packet is belong to the broadcast. So when the DSCP receive the discovery, it will offer the IP address to the AP. Then the AP will send the request. At last, the server will confirm with the AP. Okay, send the acknowledge. So when this process is done, now my AP got the IP address. So the next thing, you're going to send the discovery request. It try to send the, the request to find the controller. So when the controller is at the same network, you're going to send the response. So this one is just optional because it depends on the configuration whether we got enabled the DTLS or not. So once you establish, uh, enable the DTLS, yes, they're going to form the DTLS first. Okay, after uh, the link is already established, then you start to send a join request. So the AP will go to inform to the controller, I want to join the cap web tunnel. Then finally now, they can start to sharing the image data information. The controller can using the configuration status okay, to share the information between the AP and the AC for the data check. So the AP will practically send the chance event request. Okay, so this is AC how uh, uh, the way to receive all the information and also the lock. In the meantime, AP will send the keep alive also to make sure uh, the cap web tunnel is still established. The AP will keep sending the equal request to the AP AC to make sure the connections. Okay, this, this is something is like the ping request and the ping reply. Okay, so this is one of the um, the infrastructure. So two AP deployed at the region 101. The AP number three, number four belong to the AP region 102. So they are the two separate region. And the configuration here, you're going to put the AP one and the uh, AP number two in the VLAN 11. Okay, these two is belong to the VLAN 12. Okay, this is 11. Okay, let's look at this. So this is a call switch. We have the VLAN IP address 11, 12, 100, 101, and 102. So basically this is the gateway for everyone. Okay, so even for the AP, they also have to go through to the gateway here. The IP address for the controller only have, um, okay, this is a source IP address, 10, 1, 100, 100. 100 the 100 means this is the VLAN 100. Okay, VLAN 100. And also included the VLAN 101 and VLAN 102. Okay, so the gateway is right here. And my, sorry, this is router. My control is right here. My control have the VLAN 100, 101 and 102. 
okay now when the PC is trying to connect the Wi-Fi so they try to look for this SSID I want to connect to this SSID the Huawei 101 so it's broadcast from this 2 AP in the VLAN 11 so my client sending out the DCP information will be look like this the source IP address no information because I don't know what's my IP yet DIP destination IP address I also didn't know where is my DSCP server so I will send this one as a broadcast okay so are you going to send to the AP here so when the packet entering to the AP and come out from the AP so they have a two different process so the DSCP request in the cap web tunnel so right now I'm running the cap web forwarding mode Ah, sorry the tunnel forwarding mode so right now my AP and the control they establish with the tunnel okay they have a cap web tunnel connecting so all the user have to using this cap web tunnel return back to the controller before you can go to the DSCP server so the information inside the tunnel here will be look like this so from the outside the view you notice the source IP address is the AP AP number one 10.1.11.101 okay this is my AP AP number one and my destination IP address is go to the 10.1.100.100 this is a controller okay this is a controller so the con uh, the connection is between the AP and the controller so the user data is sent through here from the user using the data all the way back to the controller okay of course the information here is 5247 I did mention earlier on 5247 is for the user data 5246 is for the uh, those of the the AP controlling uh, packet now the AC received the DSCP request so it's going to check okay right now you connect to the SSID this one the Huawei 101 okay you connect to this Huawei 101 and I will know okay when you connect to this SSID I know you actually want to get a VLAN 101 IP address and I'm going to help you to send this one to the DSCP server then the DSCP server look at your header here you are belong to the uh, VLAN 101 okay so I will need to base on your VLAN and offer you the IP address okay now the DSCP offer the IP address this is your IP address if you want to go online so this is the IP address I offer to you okay this is your Sunday mask the gateway okay so the gateway will be right here okay this is my switch gateway of course we can uh, configure it on the server here if you want to change the gateway the DSCP server create the DSCP offer it will send to the controller first because only the controller know where is this user the AC is going to put the DSCP offer inside its own tunnel because this offer have to using the tunnel return back to the AP here okay to send back so after the AP received this DSCP offer through the tunnel so it will going to remove the uh, get the cat web information and send the DSCP offer to the user so this is how our PC get the IP address so this is somewhere here okay I do do some uh, introduce about the fair IP fair IP and the process of the cat web data uh, establishment